This is question eight from paper one two from the June 2020 set of exams from Cambridge International. In the description below this video, you'll find a link to an image of this question, and I recommend you try it before doing this question. In the description below, you'll find a link to an image of this question, and I recommend trying the question before looking at my solution. This is a really cool question because the answer to this question is gonna look just like a volcano. Don't believe me, stick with me, and we'll try and get it out of it. So the, what the question actually asks is, it wants us to rotate this shape around the y-axis. So one way, there's a couple of ways to do that, but the main way to do it, uh, we have a formula, it's pi, the integral then of x squared dy. Uh, let me just quickly show you where that comes from. This is the circle, this is pi or, uh, so pi, so that's pi r squared, pi, this is r squared, because it's this is the r, and dy is the height, so that's a, pi r squared h, that's what we have here. And that's because, let me do, uh, let me do the, a shape we're actually gonna do first. Instead of this, we are gonna just look at the curve between two points, two and six again. And we're gonna rotate this area around. So what does that look like? It looks like this, if I do the same sort of shape here, it's going to look like a this with another shape on top of it. Because we're gonna cut this up into loads of little pieces. We're cutting this up into loads of little pieces and that's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna do an infinite number of these and there's gonna be a lot of them because it's infinite. And that's where we get our cylinder because one of these guys is just, I'll rub all this out because it's not really necessary. You, really, I'll do an entire class on this. Uh, there's probably one already on my channel. And the height of this guy is d, dy. The radius of this guy is x. That's the length from here to here is x. Because this guy here is y is equal to 6 over x. Whatever x is, that's what that radius is. Whatever x is, that's what this radius is. And uh, so that's the, the volume of this is pi x squared d theta. That's where that comes from. But that's not important to our volcano. What's important to our volcano is what this shape looks like when we do infinite of them. It won't be all blocks like that. It'll have, at the bottom, this will rotate around. We'll get that shape. Um, at the, let's put in the back of that circle. As we go up, this shape will get smaller and smaller. Smaller and smaller. It'll look like a, a cone, except we'll get to this point here where it stops like this. So that's what it looks like. Not quite a volcano yet, although you can see the similarities, but we're missing a bit. We're missing a bit here. So this is not what it's going to look like. This guy looks like this. This one won't look like that. As we rotate around, as it's easier to see at the very top. As we rotate around, we're going to miss this entire bit. We're going to miss this entire bit here. And all, all the way down, we're going to miss that. So it's a mountain, it's this shape with a hole down the middle. If that's not a volcano, I'm not sure what is. So how do we do that? And um, first thing is, we'll go back to this shape. Let's work out the volume of this one here. This is the easiest one to do. Uh, like I said, we have a formula, pi, uh, pi the, the integral of x squared dy multiplied by pi, or pi r squared h. Um, we're gonna go between two and six. That's the numbers we're going to go between. And we just need to know what x is. Here's x here. So we need to change this. Let me put a little box around that. Multiply both sides by x. Divide both sides by y. And there we've changed the, we've changed the, um, the focus of this equation. So now x equals. So I know what x equals. Because we can't do this. If, if I have dy, I need y's in here. So let's see, what does this become? Uh, theta, I remember we're getting the original mountain up. Now, no hole in it. We're just getting the volume of this entire mountain. Um, let's see, between two and six, instead of x squared, I get 36 over y squared dy. This is something we can integrate. Let's make it a little easier for ourselves. Let's write it as 36 y to the power of minus two. It's the same thing, uh, lots of students will be happy to do it this way. I think it's easier to see it this way. So let's see, let's integrate this. It's equal to pi 
36, uh, oh, um, well, 36 says the same. The integral of this, we add one onto this number above y, and that becomes minus one y to the power of minus one at least. Whatever the new number is, we divide by it, minus one. And uh, that's it, we evaluate this between two and six. Let's clean this up, pi uh, minus pi 36 divided by y. Again, evaluated between two and six. Let's put six in first. That's what we have to do. Uh, 36 divided by six is six minus pi. So we have minus six pi. And then we take away whatever happens when the two goes in. So let's put the two in. 36 divided by two is 18 times pi times a minus. And uh, minus minus makes a plus. So this becomes 12 pi. Now that's, um, that's what this shape looks like. We still have to take away the bit that's missing. So there's two ways to do that. I'll show you the hard way, I won't do it, but I'll show you the hard way. The hard way is to integrate between two and six of this. It's a straight line. This line here is y, uh, sorry, this line is x is equal to one. So that's one way to do it. And much easier though is to notice what this shape will look like. Let's see, it looks like um, we already said it looks like a cylinder. Let's have it look. What height is the cylinder? It's four. What radius is the cylinder? And uh, the radius here is one. So the, the formula for a cylinder is pi r squared h. Pi r squared is one, so it's multiply pi by h really. So it's a uh, four pi. That's the volume of this bit that's missing. That's the volume of the missing bit. So we just take it away from this. So the answer here is 12 pi minus four pi, which is equal to eight pi. So that's uh, the answer to this question, which I know, I thought, I thought it's pretty cool that they gave us a question that looks like a volcano. All right, that's part A. I'm gonna have to rub most of this out. I'll keep this uh, picture here because they asked the part B question that's, um, yeah, it's fully separate. So I'll rub all that out. Okay, so for part B, they tell us there's a line y plus 2x equals zero. And they tell us there's a tangent to this curve here. Maybe I could redraw this without any of this uh, line here at all. We're only interested in the curve now. There's a tangent to this curve that is parallel to this guy. Now, first thing I do when I see a line like this is I write it again, because I don't like lines that look like that. I like my lines to look y equals. Because it makes it much easier. So it's best, this one's easy though, to move it across. So this line has a slope of minus two. It's much easier to read. It's right there. The number in front of the X is the slope. So what they're asking us is to find, um, well, they didn't straight out ask us, but really I want to find the point where this has a tangent that's the same as this guy, um, minus two that is. And that's how I knew to draw that shape like that. That's roughly correct, because this line, I can draw it here, it has no y-intercept, so it intercepts at zero. It has a slope, not plus, but minus, and it's not one, it's a bit higher than that, it's two. So that's what that line looks like. So that's how I was able to get that one parallel. Um, when they, they really want us to find this point here and find out whether it's on another line. I'll leave that line till the end. And so let's just find this point here. Right, so they're asking us about the slope of a curve. Y is equal six over X. So the first thing I wanna know is what's dy dx? That's how I'm gonna find the slope of a curve, differentiate it. Easier than writing this would be six X to the minus one. Same trick we used in part A. It's just, I'm writing it a different way because it's e easier to differentiate. The derivative here is six. Um, multiply by minus one x and we take one away we get minus two again you can fix that then put it back to how you'd normally look at it or you can keep it like that that's it's all the same I, I wish we all used this instead of this to be honest either way this is the derivative but I already know what the derivative is equal to I'll write it separately up here minus six over x squared I know that's equal to something already it's equal to minus two because they told me it's it's parallel to this line. 
So it's equal to minus 2. That means I can find x. I just need to rearrange all this. Let's get x on its own. x squared is equal minus 6 divided by minus 2. x squared is equal to 3. x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. But I know it's not minus. I just know it's not minus because I was able to draw the picture. Now if you weren't able to draw the picture, you might still have minus there. And if you kept it to the end of the question, you'd probably lose a mark. It's okay to have it here, but um, no, it's, it's definitely not, because they drew us a picture, all in the, x was positive. In the picture, x was positive, so how could a, a line um, on that curve be negative, or how a point be at the x value that's negative? So it is positive, so that's, it probably might lose you a mark straight away there. Now what's y? y is equal, it's right here, y is equal to 6 divided by x. Well, x is square root of 3. So this point is square root of 3, 6 over the square root of 3. That's this x um, point that has a, a slope that's equal to this line. And then they simply ask us to, to show that x is on the line y is equal to 2x. Not this line, that's y is equal to minus 2x. I guess it would look like and that, and uh, y is equal to, it's easy to show, we just put numbers in and see if it's correct. So y is right here, it's 6 divided by square root of 3, and x is right here, uh, 2 times x, I'm sorry, square root of 3. That's not clear, calculator will tell you, yes, they are equal, um, but it's not clear to me yet, so I'll play around with it a bit. Uh, let's see, 6 is equal to 2 times square root of 3 times square root of 3. Two of the same things multiplied, well that's the same as 2 square root of 3 squared. Uh, square root, a square root and a square cancel, that's the same as 2 times 3. This, this I'll say is correct. 6 is equal to 2 times 3. Or what I often write is 6 equals 6. Uh, this is correct, this is correct, this is correct. Therefore, this is correct. Therefore, the point is on this line. That's we've shown the point is on this line. And that's, that's what they wanted in this question. Not as fun, the second part is not as fun as the first part with a volcano, but you can't have volcanoes in every question. If you have any comments about this question, if I made any mistakes, if you're unsure about anything, put them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching, have a great day.